newsletters, blogging, open source, a beautiful interface, tons of integrations. I love Ghost and I wanted to talk about it today. Hi everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and today I wanted to show you what I like about using Ghost day to day. I'm gonna show you how I use it on my website, what I like about it, and then I'm also gonna talk about some of the challenges in using Ghost uh, compared to something like WordPress or Squarespace or something like that. Uh, but I am a huge fan of this service. If you like anything that you hear as we go along, I'll put a link at the top of the description that takes you right to Ghost to check it out. It is an affiliate link which helps this channel out if you do sign up for one of their pro plans. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, you you watch the video and get an idea about what I like about it, what I don't, and uh, hopefully you have a great idea about what makes Ghost interesting and whether it'll work for you. So the first thing that I really like, and this is going to be less important to other people, but for me, I really like it. I like that Ghost is open source and I can just download it, I can install it on my own web server and run it, and it's just mine. And I really, really like that. I like owning my content, I like having total control over things, and that's what WordPress offered me uh, when I was using that, and it's what Ghost offers me today. Now, Ghost does have a pro plan that you can subscribe to that's more like a Squarespace style experience where they handle updates for you, they handle maintenance, they handle uptime and everything and server performance and all that good stuff. But if you want to run it yourself, and I run it on a DigitalOcean droplet, it's like 10 bucks a month and that's it. Ghost itself is free. I'm just paying DigitalOcean for the web hosting uh, bandwidth or whatever. It's really, really nice. It's really easy to use. A lot of them have easy setup options. I actually have a whole video series where I walk through how to set it up on your own web server, specifically through DigitalOcean, and it's really not that hard. I think you can totally pull it off if you want to. Uh, as long as you know that there is a terminal app on your computer, <laughs> uh, you can probably pull it off. But yeah, I really, really like owning my content, having it be open source, and I'm just a big fan of that. But it's not just ugly open source software. It is beautiful open source software. The admin control panel for Ghost, I think, is fantastic looking. They updated all of their UI in early 2021 with their version 4 update, and it looks really, really good. It looked fine before, but it looks great now. It does some stuff with accenting the UI to your color uh, of your own website, so it looks a little branded. It's really, really nice. It's fast. Uh, it doesn't work great on phones. It's a little cramped and it gets a little confused for certain things. So that's definitely a thing that could improve, but on a desktop or an iPad or something, it works really, really well. Um, it's just a joy whenever I have to go in there and change something, make some edits. Uh, the editor is really, really nice. We don't even have time to get into the editor for like blog posts or newsletters. It works really, really great. Um, yeah. I'm a huge fan of this interface. It's one of the big reasons I came over uh, from WordPress because WordPress just had too much there. I didn't like using it particularly uh, and Ghost is just a joy to use. And so I'm very, very happy with the admin interface. But it's not just the back end that looks good. It's also the front end. The default Ghost theme I think is serviceable. It's a little plain, but it looks nice. But if you want to change, and you probably should change it, uh, you can go ahead and go to the theme directory, and there are tons of themes there. There's free ones that look really good, actually. There's some really good free themes you can install on your Go site, and there's premium ones as well that go from like $9 and up. A lot of them are like 30 to 50 bucks, uh, so a little bit, but you're only going to pay it once, and if it makes your website look really great and lets people kind of get drawn into your website, it's probably worth it. But because it's open source, anyone can make a theme. And the themes can come from anywhere. You can just Google around for ghost themes and you'll find other ones out there. Or you can write your own. I actually use a custom theme on my own website. I will not share it because it literally will not work for anyone else. <laughs> I didn't uh, follow any best practices for it. But I was able to kind of learn how to do theming in Ghost, how to use variables, how to make sure different pieces come together. Anyway, I have my own custom theme. I think it looks really nice. It really speaks to who I am and who I want to present myself as on my site. So I'm really happy with it. Uh, tons of theming options. Again, even if you don't know how to code at all, you can get a great looking website with Ghost. Then there's newsletters, which I don't use myself, but I know a lot of people who do, and this is one of Ghost's big focuses, is that you can create newsletters through Ghost that get emailed out to subscribers. You can create premium blog posts that only subscribers pay for or can see. They pay for a subscription and then they can see posts that not everyone else can. It's really, really powerful, pretty easy to use. And again, I don't use this myself, so I can't show you screen sharing of me actually doing it. 
Uh, but yeah, there's a dashboard where you can see your subscriber numbers, there's graphs, there's uh, kind of lists of who's your most and engaged audience members. All this stuff is there. It's really, really nice. I know a lot of people who do use Ghost for this and they seem pretty darn happy. So if you want to do a newsletter or you want to do premium blogging content and don't want to use something like Squarespace or uh, Substack or MailChimp or ConvertKit, you can do it all through Ghost. And it just seems like a really nice option. And it's really great to have all of these things all in one place. So if you have like a blog, you can do all your blog posts in Ghost. And if you want to have a newsletter, you can do your newsletter in the same Ghost instance. And it all kind of works together with same subscribers and everything. So really, really cool stuff with newsletters. There's also quite a few integrations built into Ghost. So there's things uh, like Google Analytics, there's Zapier. Zapier is like a whole host of options <laughs> that you can do. Uh, basically, you can make it so whenever a new post happens or whenever a new subscriber happens, uh, you can make it so that Zapier kicks off all these other automations because Zapier connects with everything. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's lots of integrations. You can check that out in the integrations tab in the Ghost admin panel. Uh, there's other stuff out there, but yeah, really the Zapier one is the one that really gets me instantly. I can make multiple things happen whenever I do a new blog post. Uh, if I was doing newsletters, as soon as I sent one of those out, I could do stuff with that. So lots of power here that you can unlock. Oh, and it works with some other apps. Uh, so for example, I use Ulysses on my iPhone, iPad, and Mac for basically all of my writing. Uh, and I'm able to write in Ulysses and then publish straight to Ghost from Ulysses itself. So I actually don't even need to use the Ghost admin at all for a lot of my posts. I can just go in there later to edit or to make, make changes to the website in general. But my, my posting, I can write in the writing app that I like, which is Ulysses, and then publish straight from there. So that's really cool. And the final thing I want to mention today is their concierge service. So moving blogging platforms sucks. It is so hard. Uh, I made a blog post about how I moved from WordPress to Ghost. Uh, it's possible. You can definitely do it, but there's things that are going to be missed along the way. Uh, it's just a lot of heavy lifting. It took me several days of working on it to make it happen. And Ghost's concierge service makes it so that if you're subscribing to one of their pro plans, you can go ahead and have them basically give them access to your old site, have them move everything over to Ghost so that on your Ghost site, everything is as it was on your previous one, your content comes over. It's free. Uh, again, you have to be using one of their pro uh, plans, but if you are, it's no additional cost to have them do this for you. Uh, the kind of testimonials I've seen online seem like it works pretty well. I haven't used it myself to vouch for it specifically, but it seems like it works pretty well. And just in general, anything that we can do to get rid of the migration, the manual migration from one service to another for people, I think is really, really good. But there are some things you should know about Ghost that aren't perfect or at least aren't super, super simple. And so the first thing is if you're using the open source version and hosting it yourself, that means it's all on you. Updates are on you, maintenance is on you. If something goes wrong for some reason, that's on you as well. And so you need to Google around, you need to figure out how to fix it yourself. Uh, this is true of any open source thing that you're running on your own server, same with WordPress, but it's just a thing to know about Ghost. Um, also, Ghost does a little bit more via command line than other things. So for example, updates, when there's an update to WordPress, you can see it in your admin control panel on the web. You just click updates, you hit update now, and it updates in line and you're all good. With Ghost, it's a little different. You actually have to go to the command line. There's no way, as of right now in June 2021, there's no way to do the update via the interface. Uh, so if you're doing your own self-hosting of Ghost, you have to go into the terminal, SSH into your server, go to the Ghost directory, do Ghost update, and then it will update to the newest version. It works, but it's just more manual steps. Uh, there's no way to automatically have that happen, or at least maybe there's a way to cron something to make that happen, but in general, you have to do it yourself. Now, you don't have to do any of this if you're using a Ghost Pro plan, and so these Ghost Pro plans are something more like a Squarespace experience, where you just sign up, you have a username and password, you sign in, and that gets you into your admin panel. The uh, company that you're paying will handle maintenance for you, they'll handle updates for you, uh, they handle all of this, like make, make, making sure your uptime is good and everything, your performance is great. Uh, they handle all of that for you, and that's really nice. Uh, so these Ghost Pro plans are really useful, <laughs> they're really easy to use, but they are a little expensive. You're not going to be spending $5 a month or anything to host one of these through Ghost Pro. You're going to be paying more like 10, 20, 30 bucks, or even more if you have a really big website 
through Ghost Pro. Uh, so definitely take a look at the pricing, see if it works for what you're looking for. But the service itself is really good. The uptime is really reliable. Um, it's a good service. It's just not a super, super cheap service. <laughs> so again, I pay about 10 bucks a month for DigitalOcean and I get Ghost for free because it's open source. Uh, but again, this is an additional service. They do other things for you. They get rid of a lot of the complexity for you. So that's what you're paying for with Ghost Pro. Again, check it out in the link. Uh, if you do sign up, again, a little kickback comes to me to help the channel out. Uh, but yeah, you certainly don't have to. Uh, that's why I'm talking about these negative things as well. And finally, it should be noted that while there are a good number of integrations for Ghost, and again, that Zapier integration is huge if you're using Zapier as well, it's not as ubiquitous as something like WordPress. So if you have an issue with your WordPress site, if you Google it, you're gonna get numerous pages of results. You're probably gonna get plugins that solve whatever issue you have, just because so much of the web runs on WordPress. Ghost is popular. There's millions of sites running on Ghost but it's not as big as WordPress. So there are some times where you say, hmm, how do I do this in Ghost? And there's not an easy solution, or at least there's not a pre-built solution. So something to keep in mind, you may not be able to do every single thing you wanna do uh, with just a click and be done with it. You may have to do some of your own development if it's a really specialized thing, or you may just have to kind of say, well, I guess I can't do that. Uh, so definitely a thing to keep in mind. One of those examples is search on your site. There's no search box you can just drop on your Ghost site which is really annoying. You can do it, but you kind of have to roll your own. Uh, there's some guides out there that show you how to do it, but it's more work than you would get with something like WordPress. So just a thing to keep in mind that you can do things. Uh, you can just tons of flexibility with Ghost. It's just not every single thing is going to be one Google search away. So that is it for me today. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you got a better idea for what Ghost is all about, uh, what I like about it, what I don't like about it as much. If it does sound interesting to you, again, check out that link in the description. It is an affiliate link, so it'll help the channel out if you sign up for it, uh, but you certainly don't have to. Hopefully I gave you a pretty balanced view about the service. Overall, I really, really like it, so there were more positives than negatives, uh, but yeah, I am a big fan of the service. I am super happy using it and do not plan on changing anytime in the near future. But if you like this video, I'd love it if you hit the like button. If you loved it, hit the subscribe button, and I will see you here next time. Bye-bye.